Hello there everyone, Ash and Flash here and welcome on into a very special video. Today is not just your average video, I've sat down and written a script. Something I haven't done for a video in probably nearly over 5 years since starting the channel. That's how important LEGO, LEGO Batman, and Batman the Animated Series is to me. And of course, in a ton of different videos we've talked about how impactful and formative that series was for me growing up. So I want to make sure that I cover everything and don't leave anything out. This incredible piece of art made up of over 4,210 pieces is chock full of so many references and Easter eggs to the show. But don't take my word for it. Here's a line from the description on lego.com. Fans will find that every detail, vehicle, structure, and decoration has been taken from a specific scene, episode, or moment from the groundbreaking series. The set only features references to the original Batman the Animated Series and not the new Batman Adventures. I'm adding this after two weeks of working on this video. This is probably my most researched most edited video I've ever made. So I'm going to do something I don't usually ask, but please drop a like on the video down below because I guarantee you that there is at least one thing in here that you did not know about this set coming into the video. As always, when we do videos like this, breaking down Easter eggs and references, you can find the time codes and chapters below if you want to hop around to the specific topics. I want to start with the craziest part of the set, which I think is revolutionary for a Lego set. And there's never been anything quite like this. In the set, you'll find a total of 44 bags. When you open up the instructions, you'll find at the start of every bag an episode name. It's been confirmed by the set designer, Joel Baker, that the intention here is that you can put on the specific episode of the show and you'll be able to build at the same time what you're seeing on screen. And for the most part, I think that's true, but you'll see why I say that as we go through here. You'll find with some of the episode titles like this first one is The Strange Secret of Bruce Wayne. But I guess the connection here is that you're building the Batman minifigure in bag one and you can see his secret identity underneath the cowl here. But as we go through, trust me, there's much more specific references like this one from bag two. This is on leather wings, which was the very first episode to ever air for the show. And what you're building for the first time is one of the three GCPD blimps in the sky, which are also in the intros. Bag 3, The Last Laugh, a perfect episode to reference because it takes place on April 1st, April Fool's Day, the same day this set launches globally. What you build here is a part of Wayne Manor, but specifically the Alfred tile. I love this episode a lot because it gave us this great moment with Alfred. I said I drew you a bath, sir. April Fools. Next is Shadow of the Bat Part 1. This is the episode where we see Batgirl make her debut, and in this bag you build the Batcave with her in it. Bag 5, the mechanic. Here we build a micro version of the Batmobile, while the episode introduces us to the mechanic Earl Cooper, who created the design for the iconic Batmobile. Bag six is Batgirl Returns, and here we build a couple of different buildings, but specifically the stack deck is one of the things that you build, which makes an appearance in this episode and throughout the entire series. Number seven, this one says that it's Feet of Clay Part One. This is when you place the clay face tile, and on the screens is Matt Hagen's different movie performances all playing, and you could see that he smashed one of the screens. Bag eight is, if you're so smart, why aren't you rich? Which is, of course, when you build the Riddler. Number nine is Catwalk, and this is an interesting one because it's not Catwoman's first appearance, but it's when you put the tile onto the set. You are also building a conveyor belt, which we'll come back to later on, but let's move on now to bag number 10. This is Shadow of the Bat Part 2. Here is actually where you build the courthouse, which from that episode appears when Gordon is giving a press conference at the end. Bag number 11. Going back to the Riddler, this is from Riddler's Reform. And this building is the building where the fourth annual Gotham Toy Fair is being held that you see at the start and then later on in the end of the episode. Of course, at the end, the Riddler tries to trap Batman, which is interesting because of the part usage of the cage piece. It's used elsewhere in the set as windows, but it's just fitting. Also, of course, you got the giant question mark. 
bag number 12, we're back to Clayface with Feet of Clay Part 2, and this is when you finish the exterior there for the Galaxy Broadcasting Building from that episode. Bag number 13, this is a tough one, I've gone through and watched it multiple times, Blind as a Bat. I'm not sure what you're building here that's meant to reference the specific part of this episode, there's a number of things that I've come up with. It's the first time you build one of the micro versions of the blimps. Now, you do build a couple of these throughout the set, but I think it's interesting that they chose it to be referenced here. I like to think in my head that this is the new Raven X-111, the stealth helicopter from the episode. But with the tech introduced for that, everything's in red and black on the screens and even when Bruce has to rely on that technology to see, it's all in red and black, which is obviously the whole aesthetic of this set and the whole background, the sky, the city and everything. So I kind of think that that is potentially what this is referencing. If you come up with something better for that, let me know. This next one, Fear of Victory, is in bag 14. And this building with the four statues is actually ripped straight from there. It's the building where the fear toxin first affects Robin and the crooks are trying to actually drop one of the statues on him. Bag 15, this is I Am The Knight. This is at the very end of the episode where we see Batman looking over Gotham and that building that he's standing on is actually brick built inside the set. Bag 16 is Robin's Reckoning Part 1. This is one of the ones that I have no clue. I have watched this one through multiple times. I think that there's some instances that you'll see here like this one where I think they just put iconic and important episodes on the list but they aren't actually referencing something here. You could see I'm going through the instructions and I have no clue what you're building here that ties into this episode. And whenever I'm stuck not finding a specific reference for these episodes, technically speaking, as long as you're building the background or a bit of the red sky, technically you're building a part of that classic intro. Bag 17, Heart of Ice. This is obviously chock full of references specific to that episode. You're building the Goth Corp building here specifically the gala that's happening there's a lot of things going on there's ice on the outside of the building there's ice on the inside i think that's like icicles on the roof you also have the mr freeze and summer gleason tiles as well as i believe these two bricks here are a reference to nora freeze who actually made her debut in this series because they came up with this new origin story for mr freeze Bag 18 is Birds of a Feather. This is when you place the penguin tile inside of the opera. Bag 19 says that it's Dreams in Darkness. This is an episode to do with the Scarecrow, and what you're building here is a little bit of Gothcorp and then the exterior of the Gotham Opera. The penguin does make an appearance in that episode, but besides that, I do not see the connection here at all. I almost think these two episodes should have been swapped. Bag 20. Onto instruction booklet two now is the last laugh. This is when you build the Joker minifigure. Bag 21 has you build the Batwing, which does appear in the episode Terror in the Sky. It's not its first appearance, but it is present in the episode. Bag 22, this episode is Lockup, and this is when you're building Arkham Asylum. Interesting episode choice for this when you're building Arkham. I think one of the most iconic ones for Arkham Asylum is The Trial, which is not one of the 44 episodes mentioned. And I know what you're saying. Well, Lockup appears in the set and we'll get to him, of course. But that's not when you actually build him. Bag 23 is Bane. And it's pretty self-explanatory. Here in the sewers underneath Arkham, we have Bane actually fighting killer croc which we see happen in the episode bag number 24 this is christmas with the joker and one of my all-time favorite episodes i actually know a lot of the lines from this because i had this two-pack vhs with this and the laughing fish so i would watch that on loop all the time and the stuff that you're building here isn't really specifically to that episode I'd say you build the final pieces of Arkham Asylum which you see him break out of so I guess that counts and also you are building the vat of acid inside of ace chemicals which while 
it may not take place in Ace Chemicals, there is a vat of acid in that episode. Bag number 25 is Pretty Poison. This is when you build the botanical gardens from that same episode. Bag 26, Robin's Reckoning Part 2. Again, I, I kid you not, a lot of these episodes are on YouTube, and I have gone through this episode multiple times. I don't know what is being referenced from this arc for Robin. I really don't get it. Again, you could see me flipping through here. Let me know if anything that you see ties to these two episodes. Bag 27 is Harley and Ivy. Now, as you're building this, you're actually just building the jewels and the crystals. You're just building that part there. You come back to Harley and Ivy later on. But moving on now to bag number 28, we've got nothing to fear. And this is a really crazy thing here. This is the building that the blimp actually crashes into. Like, this is not an iconic building or anything here. It's just a really gorgeous looking building from the show that they decided to include here as one of the buildings in this skyline for the set. Bag 29, Clock King. Obviously here, you're building the Clock King. We'll go through everything here. We've got the gears here as well, which are part of the clock tower, but specifically the faces on the three stickers for the clock tower. The arms on the clock tower are counting down to 315, at which time it'll crush the mayor for ruining the clock king's life. Bag 30 is probably my favorite reference and Easter egg in the set. And this is to the episode Beware the Grey Ghost. And I just really love that whole episode with Adam West and Kevin Conroy, who now we've both lost. And just the portrayal and introduction to the Grey Ghost is just so awesome. And I can't believe we have this incredible little 2x2 two two tile here commemorating that episode bag 31 is joker's wild and this for lack of a better word is a wild inclusion because that brick built head with the part that says joker's amusement area that's actually from the casino that's joker themed so that's such a crazy inclusion here the rest of that amusement area will come back to later on bag 32 the laughing fish like i said before i know this episode so so well i went through it multiple times what you're building here is the part of ace chemicals with the logo and that doesn't really have a connection to the actual episode there is a lot of talk of chemical compounds and different things like that and he was exposed to this and i guess that relates to ace chemicals in a way there is actually a specific reference to that episode on the side of the set. There's this two by two tile of the sign that's swinging in the middle of the storm from the very intro of that episode with the title card. That then changes things from the title of the episodes in the instructions to just being a reference somewhere in the set, not necessarily that bag for at least a couple of instances. Bullet for Bullock is one of those instances where you build a part of the sky and it is the first time that you actually build any bit of the bat signal. And the bat signal does make an appearance in that episode. So I guess we'll go with that. Bag number 34, Joker's Favor, one of the most important episodes in the entire series. And this is Harley Quinn's first appearance. It is to laugh, huh, Mr. J? And what do you do in the set? You actually place her and Ivy's tiles down. Bag 35 here, this is Cat and Claw Part 1. This is when you build the Catwoman minifigure, as well as... Catwoman's apartment, which is this gorgeous looking building, captured that building look so well. Number 36 is Two-Face Part 1, when you place Two-Face. This is, of course, when the lightning flashes outside and through the window, the light reveals Two-Face's other side of his face. Also, this is the first time ever that Two-Face wore black and white. And while he may not have been wearing that inside of the hospital or having the Tommy gun, it's important, of course, that he wears that here in the set. Bag 37 is the episode, The Man Who Killed Batman. And in that episode, you actually see that the Joker breaks into the diamond exchange to see if Batman really is dead, which is where that little tile is from, which that whole building design is actually from that episode. Bag 38 is Make Em Laugh, and this is the 10th annual Gotham Laugh-Off. 
And all you're doing in this bag is just building the exterior corner part of that building. The Laugh Palace. Bag 39 is Demon's Quest Part 1. This is when you place Ra's al Ghul. And it's interesting, they never have you actually watch Part 2, so you'll have to do that on your own time. Bag 40 is when you go back for Two-Face Part 2 and you finish up the hospital, which appears all throughout the show, of course, with that medical cross. But what I love about this is that through the windows on the left and the right, you could see that there's actually white and black, just like Two-Face's iconic look that, again, debuted in the show. Bag 41 is one of the most emotional episodes, I'd say, of the show, Perchance to Dream. And here you build Wayne Enterprises, which of course makes an appearance all throughout the show, but that's such an important episode that you definitely need to check out. Now I'm going to mention this here because I don't really know what it is. This dark blue part, these tiles that you place, it's a removable section of Wayne Enterprises, but I have absolutely zero clue where this is from. I watched every single episode that the whole building is in the office all of it i don't know what this is referencing there's been a lot of different theories and different things thrown out about it potentially being words or of course in that episode because it's a dream you can't read so all the letters are sort of jumbled up could be that but i don't know what it's trying to say i have no clue what this is if you can figure this out please let me know but it just seems so deliberate. Bag 42, you have Knight of the Ninja, and this is where you finish building Wayne Enterprises. Bag 43 is Cat and the Claw Part 2. This is when you're building the GCPD, and that connects to bag number 44. When you finish building the GCPD, this is from the Cape Cowl Conspiracy, which is actually the very first appearance of the Bat Signal, which is one of the final things that you build. Going through the characters, we've got Batman. He's a printed tile standing on top of the building seen in the intro of the show. We've got Alfred. Of course, he's got a little bit of tea. We've got Robin in the Batcave. And I feel like him and Batgirl running like that is very reminiscent of the 66 Batman show. This is actually really interesting. So the designer said that there are 31 characters featured in the set besides Batman and the Grey Ghost, so technically 33, and that a couple of them are brick built, not represented by stickers or prints. So that made me go looking for, of course, Nora Freeze, which we mentioned before, but also these two gray tombstones, again, have been confirmed by the designer to be Thomas and Martha Wayne's tombstone but the designer told me to look underneath and what's underneath two coffins represented by those two ingots the riddler again and i didn't talk about this before but he actually doesn't have a question mark kane in the show and i'm assuming that what looks to be riddler trophies in behind him are just meant to be some toys we got clayface also, I have to mention this, but it looks like his appearance is ripped straight from the Lego Batman video game from 2008. Catwoman's here with her cat, Isis. And again, in Goth Corp, just in case you didn't watch that other section, we've got Summer Gleason, who's the reporter in the series, not Vicky Vale, as some people have said. We've got Mr. Freeze and Nora Freeze. We, of course, again, have the Penguin on stage. Inside the GCPD, we have Renee Montoya, who also made her first appearance alongside Harley Quinn in Joker's Favor. Detective Harvey Bullock is there, along with Commissioner Jim Gordon. Two-Face in the hospital. And inside the museum, there's actually two characters. The first we talked about before is Rachel Ghoul. And next to him, I think, is a sarcophagus, which is on display during the Treasures of the Pharaohs exhibit from the episode Avatar. And then the Scarecrow is here unleashing his fear toxin. While throughout the series it's red, it's actually green in the episode Nothing to Fear where he crashes the Gotham University Museum benefit. With Harley and Ivy, they both have diamonds that they've stolen. Harley's got her hammer and Ivy's got some plants. And they're actually inside of the diamond exchange building. However, the room is sort of split in half with red on one side and kind of a plant build on the other. In the center, the checkered tiles create a diamond shape. I'm not really sure like what's going on here in this room. It's not their hideout. The Clock King again inside of the Clock Tower. The Condiment King who first debuted in the show is on stage of the Laugh Palace. While we never actually see that in the episode, however, he is here squirting out 
ketchup and mustard and his appearance here is very similar to the minifigure that we got from the Lego Batman movie which of course was inspired from the show. The Joker is inside of Ace Chemicals. In the sewers again there's Killer Croc and Bane. Killer Croc often mentions rocks throughout the show but specifically he does pick up a giant rock and throws it at Batman in Sideshow. Lastly inside of Arkham Asylum there's plenty of inmates. Scarface and the Ventriloquist are in the first cell behind glass. Baby Doll who makes her debut in the show is also featured here. The Mad Hatter is here and he's got a couple of teapots and teacups for a tea party. Of course we've been waiting to get him in Lego form since the 2008 Lego Batman video game. Man Bat is hanging upside down in his cell and lastly lock up looks like he's in a cell but he's not behind any glass but again he also made his first appearance in the show there are plenty of other references throughout the set such as the buildings of course again wayne manor is built above the bat cave the grandfather clock is included inside of wayne manor which is directly above the elevator which leads directly into the bat cave that's right alfred the bat cave it's a big hole in the ground with a big car in it that's all black remember the bat computer is represented by a two by three tile sticker and up in the corner is a giant penny this is from when two-face recounts his tale in the episode almost got him and it's explained here that batman got to keep the penny it's also seen being cleaned by alfred penny worth in the episode off balance the Batcave also has the bridge that you can lower and raise for the Batmobile to come and go. The Wild Deuces is a reference to one of Two-Face's hideouts, the stack deck, which makes an appearance throughout the entire series. Fat Polly's Pool Hall is a location that appears in a couple of different episodes, but the set actually has a sign on the side that you can see from a certain angle that also says pool. The neon cat sign is marking the Pussykin's Pet Food Factory, which is another reference to Almost Got Him, where Catwoman is again tied up on a conveyor belt. This time, though, she's about to be turned into cat food. Outside the Gotham Opera is a poster for Pagliacci, who is a clown. Does that make it another character reference? I don't know. The bat signal on top of the GCPD actually lines up perfectly with the giant Batman symbol in the sky. Inside of Gordon's office, is actually a little propeller piece meant to represent the fan that we often see inside of his office. There's a water tower, and this is a bit of a stretch, but it could be a reference to the Warner Brothers iconic water tower. The WB logo transforms into the lights from the GCPD blimps in every intro, but that is a shield and not the water tower, so it's probably not that, but I just figured I'd throw that out there. Now I have no idea what this building is. It's the only other building in the set besides the sort of generic black ones that I don't know what this could be. It's built in bag 34, which is Joker's favor. I've scoured that episode and cannot spot a single skyscraper in it. I then spent hours upon hours going through all the episodes, behind the scenes documentaries about the making of Gotham. I cannot figure it out. I tried to think of iconic buildings that don't actually appear in the set. Rupert Thorne's Penthouse, Thorne Enterprises, Daggett Industries. None of them match the shape of this building, except for City Hall, which can be seen in Blind as a Bat, as well as Mask of the Phantasm. I think it's sort of similar, and I think in my mind that's what I'm going to look at that as. The Ferris wheel and fence in Joker's amusement area is seen in Be a Clown. Ace Chemicals is only seen in The Man Who Killed Batman, which is interesting because in behind the Joker you'll notice a broken railing, which ties into the line, For it was the Batman who made me the happy soul I am today. And going back to that vat of acid we've talked about a couple times throughout the video, that could be the one that they throw Sid the Squid into. Inside the sewers is the Penguin's Duck Boat, which appears in both Birds of a Feather and The Mechanic. Now there's a couple other random bits of information that I want to let you know. This might not interest some people, but for the first time, a DC 18 Plus set had its own customized brick pattern trim on the box. It features a ton of different pieces relating to DC characters. Let's start with Batman. There's, of course, the bat shield piece as well as a cowl. And, well, 
all the bricks are in black. I only work in black and sometimes very, very dark gray. Superman has a crystal piece of kryptonite. Wonder Woman has a sword as well as her lasso of truth. The Flash's cowl is here. Green Lantern's lantern piece from the minifigure series. And lastly, there's also Aquaman's trident. If you peep inside the instructions, you'll notice the designer, Joel Baker, is wearing a brown leather jacket, black tie, and yellow shirt, which is a reference to what Bruce Wayne wears all throughout the series. And the graphic designer, Mark Tranter, is actually wearing a Batman 89 shirt. There are, of course, two instructions, so a dynamic duo such as Batman and Robin could build the set together at the same time. You then bring the two sides together and then finish up some of the details in the center of the set. And I have to mention this or I'll get comments, but the set mimics the art style from the show. Dark Deco, a term used for describing the Art Deco style for the series, but with a darker tone. And like other LEGO art sets, you can hang this from the wall, but this also has the unique ability where there are legs in the back that open up so you can just leave this propped up. The back of the set has a bunch of random pieces all built there, and I said in my review that I don't know what those are. Well, the designer actually clarified what it is. It balances out the left and right wedge plates across the entire set, and it needed to cover all the seams between the large red plates to prevent any light bleeding through from behind. So essentially what that means is that because there's the even amount of angled plates, that means that you can actually completely reverse and mirror this set. The same thing was actually kept in mind last year with the Amazing Spider-Man set. This set actually comes with a new minifigure display stand. This is an updated version with a new take on the gargoyles and the rooftop ledge that we've actually been getting in a lot of the Batman D to C's starting back in 2019 with the Batman 89 Batmobile. While some of the minifigure accessories are sort of basic and could be from any episode, Harley's is very interesting with this gun with the little sort of, I almost want to call it like a cork on the end. This is ripped straight from the Harley Quinnade title card. Part 5 is what's missing. In this final part, I want to discuss some things that I personally think are missing, as well as some rumors surrounding the set. I think they did an incredible job capturing all these iconic locations and including different characters. I think that I would have liked to see tiles for some other people who popped up a lot throughout the show, like mob boss Rupert Thorne, Mayor Hamilton Hill, and maybe perhaps Bruce Wayne or Lucius inside of Wayne Enterprises. The buildings I mentioned earlier I think are iconic enough to make it into the skyline, but something directly marking Crime Alley would have also been really cool to see them do somehow. We got caskets already, you can't get much darker than that. But I think something that is definitely missing here is a direct reference to the Mask of the Phantasm. I know we talked about that a little bit before. Let's say somehow that that was something left over from the Mask of the Phantasm. That could actually lend credence to this original rumor where the original lineup for the set was going to have Batman, the Joker, Harley Quinn, Mr. Freeze, who we've talked about a lot throughout this video and why he was so significant and important. But don't worry, he is rumored to be appearing in a Batman the Animated Series minifigure Batmobile later this summer. But the Phantasm was also rumored to make an appearance. This would have been the first time we get the character in minifigure form. It was also rumored that the original set was going to have the word Gotham brick built in the front and center of the set instead of Batman up at the top. But anyways, everyone, that brings us to the end of this crazy adventure. I love to hear what some of your favorite references and Easter eggs are in the set. Did I miss any? Is there anything that you would have also liked to see included? Comment it all down below, but I hope that you guys did enjoy this video. Hope you all have a great day. I will see you all in the next one.